Allah SWT let you uh, recite a particular word, inshallah, that you find yourself in a situation in which Allah SWT you know, will give you the barakah, give you the blessing just for that. It could be a small word, and Allah SWT blesses us. So inshallah, Aziz, this is to allow us to understand, to grow, and to realize all of the blessings that we get during this particular word. Another thing that we should do during the particular time of Ramadan is realize that backbiting and other things are major sins. That during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that there were some women one time, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came upon them, and they were backbiting. And he wanted to show them something. So he told them, he brought a container and told them to, to vomit. When they vomit, it was big chunks of, of bloody meat that came out. They were like, wow, what is this? He said, this is the back of the person that you were just backbiting. That to backbite is the same as eating the back of your brother or your sister. So inshallah, this is something that we should, you know, try to uh, do. <coughs> Another thing that we can do, inshallah, is pray in Kiyamulev. That during the time of Ramadan, that we pray Kiyamulev, we get up at night, inshallah, we pray to Hajj. That we realize and understand the fact that Allah <coughs> has given us the opportunity, inshallah, to stop sleeping. We get up and we know it's a sacrifice, especially, inshallah, a lot of times in the winter months. You know, you get up, it's cold, the bed was warm, the blankets were warm, everything was warm. But, inshallah, we get up and we stand before our Lord. One of the blessings of that particular time is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let us realize and understand the fact that Allah said that he descends during the time of Qiyam Olev. And he comes to the Lord seven, he cries out, who is there? Who is in need of something that I might grant his wish or her wish? Who is there that is in need of, of, of some sin being forgiven? And Allah wants to ask a series of questions, and inshallah, this is something that my Ustad taught me, you know, oh man, many, many years ago, that we have to ask ourselves, how can you lay in your bed knowing that the Lord of the world is asking you, do you need something? And there we are laying in the bed and Allah SWT is asking us, do we need something? This is something that is Allah Allah. Usually we know that inshallah ta'ala aziz, that Allah SWT, we usually say in Allahumma, 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 but during the time of Qiyam Olayl, we say that Allah SWT is asking me and you, me and you who are worth nothing. You see what I'm saying? Me and you who are full of covered with sin. Me and you who do many things wrong. But Allah SWT is descending during the time of, of, of Qiyam Olayl and asking us. So this is the time that you question yourself. That you go within your heart. That you go within your mind. And you ask yourself, why am I laying in this bed when the Lord of all of the worlds has come down? has descended and wanted to know and wanted to know is there anything that I need? That the Lord of all of the worlds has come down and wanted to know is there something that I need to receive? I think you will find out if you're honest, if you're true with yourself, if we try to be so deep, inshallah, that we'll get an answer back and that answer will be inshallah to Aziz that we need to get up. The other thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that during the month of Ramadan, that we can recognize our sin. That we have to admit that we're imperfect and that we depend upon Allah SWT. You know, it's one thing, inshallah, we say, that there's no strength or power but Allah. And it rolls off the tongue too easy sometimes. But when we really realize that there's no strength or power, save Allah SWT, then we realize how inadequate we are. That we realize, inshallah, there's a lot of shortcomings that we suffer from, and that the way we get rid of these shortcomings, the way that we get rid of these things, inshallah, is to recognize and to admit that we've sinned. Forgiveness is something that we need. Pick out a sin that we've committed. Pick out anyone. And sincerely, sincerely ask Allah SWT to forgive us as far as that particular sin is concerned. Sincerely ask Allah SWT to forgive us and sincerely implore Allah SWT to be that way with us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith has told us that inshallah that we should be like the one inshallah 
who is afraid to go before your parents because you know you did something wrong and you might be punished by your parents. So you sincerely, you cry to your mother, your father. You see what I'm saying? You cry in the Bible. You know, oh, don't whoop me. Don't do this. I did that. I did the other. You know, I shouldn't have borrowed the car. I borrowed the car and I wrecked the car, right? Well, this should be even more serious. We're coming before Allah SWT, who knows all of the sins that we've done. All of the sins that we've done. And yet and still, how can we lay in the bed? Like I said, this is what my Ustad used to always impress upon me. How can you lay in the bed? And you don't have to share this with anybody else. This is for us. This is for you. To have the courage to ask yourself this. How can you lay in the bed knowing perhaps that the Lord of the world is descended to ask you and I for something? The wretched human beings that we are. I have no problem admitting that I'm a wretched human being. I have no problem admitting that I'm one who falls short. I have no problem admitting the fact, inshallah, that I have sins that are upon me. And that Allah SWT, out of his infinite mercy, grace, and wisdom, has now descended and has given me an opportunity to be free of that. SubhanAllah. Another thing we can do, inshallah, is share Ramadan with our neighbors. SubhanAllah. Our neighbors have a right to know about Ramadan. The non-Muslims have a right to know about Ramadan. Just the other day, alhamdulillah, I was blessed, inshallah, to Allah Aziz, to go to the naturalization ceremony. The first time a Muslim imam had given the dua, had given the prayer for the naturalization ceremony. And there were five Muslims who became U.S. citizens that day. There was a couple of brothers from Iraq. There was a couple of sisters. Uh, there was sisters from Syria. And they were so happy to see that a Muslim was there, inshallah, along with all the other dignitaries welcoming them to becoming part of the United States. Well, this is something, inshallah, to Al-Aziz, that we all should do. That should be, we should share Ramadan with our non-Muslim neighbors, with our Muslim neighbors, that we have a duty and responsibility that they see what Ramadan is like. You know, that's the beautiful thing, inshallah, that we do with, when, we, when we used to have the food program and we were giving charity. People couldn't believe that we were feeding people while we were fasting. That we were fasting, going hungry, going thirsty, and we were feeding people. They couldn't believe it. This is one of the reasons why that the governor's office recognized us. This is one of the reasons why, because they couldn't believe that. They couldn't believe it. Here these people are going hungry. Here these people are, are not drinking water. Here they're not doing this, they're not doing that. And yet and still, they're taking the time, inshallah, to Aziz, to feed other people. Subhanallah. But there's other things that we can do too. Explain to our neighbors about Ramadan. Explain to them why we are going hungry. Explain to them why we're fasting. Explain to them why we're going thirsty. So they can realize and understand that this is a duty from our Lord. That this is one of the five pillars. You understand? The arkan, the arkan, the arkan, the pillars, the posts that help support this religion. And that Siyam is something that we do voluntarily to gain the pleasure of our Lord. So like I said, I just want us to concentrate during this month of Ramadan to leave a lot of foolishness alone. That if each and every one of us just took a pledge that we're going to leave foolishness alone, that we're going to leave foolish things alone, and that we're going to, inshallah, concentrate on the stuff that Allah SWT has told us. There is so much stuff that happens during this particular month. That's a blessing for us. Do you know, inshallah, to Aziz, why the Quran is broken down into the juice? It's not just so it's easy that we can recite a juice a day. But the scholars say that something special happens every day that that particular juice is recited. So that, inshallah, even when we get all the way to juice am, and we're finishing up the Quran, the 30th part of the Quran, that it's arranged in a certain way that the blessing, the barakah, the fawab that we get is so, I, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even describe it to you how wonderful it is. How wonderful it is. So inshallah to Aziz, I just want to remind us, just as a reminder. I know you know these things. Some of you may know it better than myself or other people here, but that's not the point. Let me tell you something. 
uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sometimes he would say something to the Sahaba. And they would look at him and they would sort of smile because they loved him and respected him. And so they, he asked them one time, why are you so proper? They said, oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you already told us this. Oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you just told us this. You told us that. You know what Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam would say to them? With love, as much love and compassion in his voice, he would say, I know you know these things. I'm just here to remind you. This is why the Quran is called the reminder. We all know certain things. Alhamdulillah. We all know certain things. We all realize certain things. But the Quran is the reminder. Inshallah. Because we all need to be reminded. That's why, inshallah, you see, you go uh, to a masjid, and inshallah, there may be a hafiz there. Well, usually there's another hafiz there sometimes because the hafiz can correct the other hafiz if he misses something in the Quran, right? We all need a reminder. We all need a reminder. And that's the beauty about the Quran. And inshallah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the best reminder that we had. Because when we saw something to say, for example, you understand? Kala Abu Rayman radiallahu an Kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then it reminded us, said Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So inshallah, we feel good about that. Because inshallah, the best way my teachers always taught me is to look at the hadiths. Look at the hadiths, inshallah, as, as a reminder that you needed that particular day. Look at the Quran, inshallah, as something that we needed that day. Inshallah, as I close out this part of the Qutbah, the, the, the Quraysh used to always bug Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about who is Allah. Who is Allah? Who is Allah? Who is Allah? Blah, 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 blah. On and on and on, they would bug Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say, yeah, we know everything there is about, auzu billahi, about Allah or, or, or Hubble or auzu billahi, some of the pagan gods that existed there. But Muhammad, tell us who Allah is. And usually when they talked about their gods, they would get into some long, eloquent soliloquy about this, that, or the other. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam refused to say anything. So it got to the point that they were laughing at ridiculing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. Then Jibril came to him and just take, told him something very short. It wasn't any long thing, and you all know it. Then he told him, he said, Bismillah al-Firin. Kuhu Allahu ahad. Allahu sallam. And he said it exactly the way that they, that Jibril alayhi salam had told him to say it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? See how important Kala Allah is. That Allah SWT, when he tells us something, yeah. see how important it is. That maybe some of us would have went into some long philosophical discourse that we wanted to try to impress to them how much we knew about this and and the idolatry that was going on and this, that, and the other. But those words were so eloquent. What is the class called? One third of the Quran. Mm. One third of the Quran. Just that alone. Just that alone that some little small kid could see. I remember when Shalom, I was fortunate enough to be in Egypt. And I was looking at this, this volume, set volumes of, that was written by this particular scholar. And inshallah, it was, uh, let me get it right. It was all. It was 19, 19 volumes. So I said, "Oh man, this is beautiful. This that, and that other." And I looked more carefully, and it was a tafsir of Surah Al-Class. <laughs> Nineteen volumes talking about Surah Al-Class. This is the Quran. This is the reason why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said that if all of the oceans were ink and all of the trees were pens, that sooner would all of that be exhausted than the words of Allah. That's why I want you to learn the Quran. That becomes inscribed on your heart. You see, I can say something wrong. Somebody else can say something wrong. But inshallah, we base our faith upon the Quran and the son of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, I'll get into more in the second part of the day. Just when we're saying the basmi. My teachers have always taught me that it should roll off your lips like a lover talking to his beloved. You know how when you're talking to your wife and you're saying something to her, 
something sweet, something beautiful. Ah, baby. You know how we do. Well, inshallah, it should be the same way toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even more. That we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much, man. It's like, ah, ya Allah. And then we talk about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should roll off our lips the same way. That I love you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I love you. I love you. This the hadith, and you know it as well as I do. It said that we should love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than we love our mothers and our fathers. Do you know how much a hadith that is? You know how you love your mother and your father. Inshallah. But we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more than that. So let's do these things, inshallah, to get the thawab and the reward. One of the things that we can do, inshallah, <coughs> is uh, ask Allah to forgive our brothers and our sisters. There's a hadith, inshallah, whoever seeks forgiveness for the believing men and the believing women, Allah will write for him a good deed in each believing man and believing woman. SubhanAllah, this has been classified as hadith. This has been classified as a sound hadith. Wait a second. Do you realize what I just said? I didn't know. Until my teacher sat me down and just banged me in my head, banged me in my head, banged me in my head with this particular hadith. And I'm a dumb 19-year-old. And he said, do you realize what you just said? And I read it again. Whoever seeks forgiveness for believing men and believing women will receive a good deed. How many Muslims are there on the face of the earth, inshallah? Approximately 1.8 billion. Now, we know the Hasanah for making Salat in congregation, for example, 27 times more than making it by ourselves. 25 times more than making it by ourselves. Those are two down tracks. Could you imagine getting 1.8 billion Hasanah every day just for asking for forgiveness for all your Muslim brothers and sisters? Man, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Just say, uh, you don't have to say it out loud. Imam, I don't need 1.8 billion Hassan. Okay, I leave you alone. I'm the first one to put my hand up and say, I do. <laughs> I do. Inshallah, that is it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there was narrated by Abu Huraira writing out to Ayn, whoever says, SubhanAllah will be humbly he will SubhanAllah his name. Each morning, that his sins will be erased, even there like the foam on the sea. This is recorded in Bukhari and Muslim. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. <clears throat> Just from small things. <clears throat> that all too often we get hung up in the big things. But here Allah SWT is telling us that if we did that, a hundred times in the morning and a hundred times in the evening, his sins will be erased. Subhanallah. <laughs> ya Ibadullah. Realize and understand that there are so many small things that we can do. And that each thing we do during the month of Ramadan is magnified at a minimum of 10 times the fawaz, 10 times the reward we would get. Another time, you know, I like to talk about the real aspects. And, and, and I, I thank my teacher so much, and I hope Allah SWT eliminates all of the teachers I've had. I hope that he illuminates their, their grave with light because they've all gone on. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one time was talking to the companions and he was telling them how much blessings, how much uh, they would get for giving sadaqah. And they were all so happy about giving sadaqah and this, that, and other. And then he came up with another group of the, the, the Sahaba crying right in our eyes, and they were crying. And they said, what's going on? What's going on? They said, Ya Rasulullah, we, we, we feel bad. He said, what's the matter? He said, Rasulullah, we are the miskin. We're the miskin. We don't have anything to give. And you just tell all of these other brothers, inshallah, all the blessings they can get, all the thawab they can get, all the ajr they can get just for doing this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to smile at your Muslim brother is a form of charity. So you just came in here and you smiled at everybody in here. SubhanAllah. You're not talking because inshallah the football is going. You smiled at everybody. And subhanAllah. That's the blessing to do. That's the blessing to do. That there's so many little things. You walk, you were coming into the masjid, and you saw there was a stick, a branch, that was in the pathway. 
just to clear that stick, that branch, out of the way so nobody trips or falls over it. You get a bunch of blessings. You see, all too often we try to look at the big, big, big thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong, inshallah. I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the big things that we can achieve. But these are small things, inshallah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy and wisdom gives us the opportunity to gain the reward of. To gain the reward of. SubhanAllah. We can intensify our ibadah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the deeds must be loved by Allah are those who are done regularly, even if they're small. That the deeds that are loved most by Allah are those that are done regularly, even if they're small. So you have a particular habit that's doing something, inshallah, but you do it regularly. Those are the deeds that are loved most by Allah, subhanallah. We realize and understand the fact that we do it with the intention of pleasing Allah and be forgiven for our sins. If we were to see the amount of sins that we carry on ourselves, it would be like a big 800-pound gorilla riding on your back. But there's a way to get it off of you. There's a way to get it off of you. And that's by doing those things which are going to please Allah. We all know, inshallah, that even to offer a fasting person just even some, some, some old milk and some crusty bread to break their fast with, there's a tremendous amount of blessing. So, inshallah, my point I'm trying to make, inshallah, is up our, up our ibadah. Up our ibadah. Try to do more. We all can do more. We can all help each other more. Do we have shortcomings? Of course we do. Of course we do. I was uh, talking to somebody the other day. I was at the hospital. And they said, oh, I'm so sorry to see that you're on that walker and that you messed your hip up again. I said, I'm not. And this non-Muslim looked at me and said, oh, you crazy? I said, if this is something that Allah is doing to cleanse me of some sins I've committed, I love every piece of pain that I'm receiving right now. This is not my idea. This is something I learned from the beloved. That I learned from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That if Allah loves you, a lot of times, if you don't complain about it, it's not an affliction. If you complain about it, it's an affliction. If you don't complain about it, and you realize that whatever Allah SWT has for you is good for you, Alhamdulillah. I just was blessed by Allah to have my 36th grandchild born this week. So how can I complain about anything? When I'm looking at my brothers in, in Syria who are burying their grandbabies under the rubble of the fitna that's going on in Syria right now. Like I said, and I, I make no bones about it. I don't care who doesn't like it. Those are my brothers and my sisters, and their children are my nieces and my nephews. I don't care if they've never, I've never met them before. I don't care what ethnic group they're from. I don't care if they're Kurd. I don't care what. They are my brothers. They are my sisters. And my heart cries with them. My heart cries with them. So inshallah to Ayat Aziz, you have to ask yourself. You have to ask yourself. Does your heart cry with them? I can't answer it. Do you feel the pain that they're going through? Or take any example of what the Muslims are going through right now. Ya ibadullah. I hope and I pray, inshallah, that we take advantage of this month of Ramadan. I ask uh, each and every one of us to reflect upon that. My sheikh used to tell me, I said, sheikh, how can I tell if I had a good Ramadan? He said, if you came out of it better than when you went into it, inshallah. If you can honestly say, and I mean be hard on yourself, if you can honestly say that you are a better Muslim at the end of Ramadan than when you were when you started Ramadan. And that's not to impress anybody. I'm not saying you have this conversation with anybody. You're not here to impress anybody. I'm not here to impress anybody. Whatever we do, matter of fact, the Hadith says that the right hand shouldn't even, the left hand shouldn't even know the, the charity that the right hand is doing. You know what I'm saying? That's how it should be. 
That's how it should be. <laughs> then, inshallah, we do it purely for the love of us. I was talking to a brother one time. He said, you know, I think, alhamdulillah, man, I, 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 I'm, I'm like this and I'm like that. Because, inshallah, <laughs> there's this brother that goes to the mosque and I don't like him in it. And, but I put up with him for the sake of Allah. I said, well, you know what? <laughs> he puts up with you, too. <laughs> Just as no good as you are. And he said, hey, man, how can you say that? Because you don't know. The person you're talking about could be a hundred times better than you. I always try to. Try to. I'm not successful. Try to look at every Muslim as being better than me. Being, being better than me. That keeps you away from certain things. That keeps you away from certain things. As I close, inshallah, let's take advantage of Ramadan. Let's take advantage of Ramadan. You all have gone through certain things. I know two years ago, during Ramadan, I was lying up in intensive care. The doctor said I wouldn't see another day. But Allah had a better plan. Well, I still think this Ramadan, I hope I see it. But I want to act like it's going to be my last Ramadan. And if we think that it's going to be our last Ramadan, then we'll realize and appreciate how sweet it is. We'll realize and understand that this might be the last chance that you and I have to make up for the things that we've done in our life that we should be ashamed of. So, inshallah. I want for you what I want for myself, and I want for you, Jennifer Perigo. I hope you've been a shape on there doing this in our community. May Allah SWT protect and watch over us. May Allah SWT keep us on the Sarah for Mufakim. May Allah SWT allow us to take advantage of the rest of this month of Shaban. May Allah SWT keep us on the straight path. Give us our book of deeds in our right hand. A swift passage over the Sarat Bridge. And Allah SWT. Ya Allah, admit us to your Jannah and admit the Muslims all over the world to your Jannah and forgive them for their sins. Amen. <laughs> Allah is the one who is the one who is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Salata Al-Mustaqim Sirata Al-Lazina Na'amta Ilayhim Ghayr Al-Mahdubi 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 Al-Mahdubi
Sen har inte det din enda Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I have a couple of quick announcements. Inshallah, I'll try to be brief. Uh, inshallah, our dear brother Abu Bakr's <coughs> father passed away this week. Abu Bakr uh, from, uh, from uh, Shemizer. His father passed away, inshallah. We have a wedding next after Juma, inshallah, Sister Teresa and her brother Abdel are getting married. Uh, Mikhail will be right after uh, Juma Salah. They're also going to have a Walima, and we'll announce the location for the, for the Walima. Also, inshallah, they're having a, uh, the sisters are having a henna party, uh, inshallah. So go on the Masjid's uh, Facebook page, and uh, I have somebody post that on there. Also, inshallah to Ida Z, uh, remember and uh, keep all the Muslims all over the world in your dua. This is very, very, very important. We're, we're at a, a point. Also, inshallah, for those of you who know Brother Haji, Brother Haji, inshallah, was in a very bad industrial accident. Uh, the whole right side of his body was uh, crushed in, a, in an accident. Uh, he's at Atkins City Hospital in intensive care. He's already had surgery and he's going to have some more. It's a duty, if we can, to uh, visit the sick. Uh, the hasana, the blessing gift is, is great for that. <laughs> also, inshallah, uh, thank you for your prayers, your duas, uh, inshallah, myself, my family. Uh, we would like to thank my 36th grandchild. Did I forget anybody, anything going on? Inshallah. Oh yeah, alhamdulillah, uh, brother uh, Uthman, I proudly say my cousin, uh, his grandson was just uh, drafted into the NFL, so inshallah, that's another, uh, inshallah, we live with the family. Salaam alaikum. 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 Yes, I think for me, so I don't know the price. For you? Yeah. No, for him. I took Ali's fish. Yeah, that Ali. Assalamu <laughs> <laughs> alaikum. Just turn it on. Yeah, thanks. 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 Yeah, thanks